to come and share with us the word new beginnings. Pastor Lee. Well, good morning and happy Sabbath church. It's good to see you here in online. You know, oftentimes we talk about good old days. And I hear that all the time growing up. And guess what? I started using that word too now these days, good old days. And at the same time, we thank the Lord that we are living in a pretty good days too. And we thank God for the technology that we have so that we can still meet together over in Zoom and worship together. I know that uh, we are living various parts of uh, Ontario, but we thank God for the internet that we have and we can gather together in the name of our Lord. And uh, well, two weeks I was here joining you and I think it's a lot better now than two weeks ago because I didn't recognize a lot of faces. I was just learning names. But over the last two weeks, I was able to visit, I think about two thirds of you there. I'm still in the process, but now I know who you are. I can almost call you by your name. I know your faces. I know where you live now. <laughs> so I thank the Lord that we are getting acquainted and uh, we are becoming friends. I pray and hope that we will be uh, in a part of the family from here all the way to the kingdom of God. So we live eternally together. But before we open up the word of God, I'd like to invite you one more time as we open up the word of God and let's invite the Holy Spirit to be here wherever we are. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up. Thank you for renewing another day. But Lord, we want to thank you so much that today is a beautiful Sabbath. I know that with restrictions, we are homebound. However, we're able to meet together over in Zoom now. We want to thank you that we are able to worship you. So wherever we are now, may the Holy Spirit draw near to us. As you knock on our door, I pray that we will open the door and let you in. And I pray that you hide me behind the throne of grace and mercy. So only Jesus will be seen and heard today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to thank everyone who participated in our service until now. Thank you for the story. And thank you, children, for your participation. It's it's really encouraging for me to see children memorizing, you know, God's word, scriptures. There's nothing like it. Thy word, you know, have I hidden my heart that I may not sin against thee. So having God's word in our hearts is the only, only safe way for us to stay healthy and happy in this world. I want to open up with the, um, with the stories that happened about five, six weeks ago. And I had a chance to uh, travel to British Columbia, a beautiful place. And I was asked to come and share God's word in one of our schools in British Columbia. So I was there for one week, um, you know, breaking God's, God's, God's word. And so every morning and evening, I was asked to speak. And um, there's one particular day that message was not fully ready. So the day before, I spent the whole day. I spent the whole day, I typed them up, and I worked all the PowerPoints, and I spent hours and hours, pretty much spent probably, I would, I would say, at least good eight, nine hours for the presentation. So by the time I finished, it was uh, around 10.30. So I said, Lord, thank you for the strength you have given me. Yeah, I think I'm ready. So I thank the Lord and I asked for the good night of sleep and went to bed. Next morning, when it was time for, uh, for worship in the morning, I brought my computer, I tried to open the, open the file 
the file wasn't opening. Actually, in fact, the pot file opened, but I don't know what happened. It wasn't saved. All the work I've done was, was in vain. Uh, so that moment, I wish, you know, I wish I have a little button I can press to go back and recover or restart or to reset. I know that sometimes the Windows or the computer has a system restore, can go back to maybe a week, one week, a week ago or two weeks ago, a month before, so you can access all the old files. But unfortunately, nothing worked that morning. But I thank God that he has given me, uh, he's given me some wisdom. So I was able to still preach from, from my heart. So just it was me and good old Bible and me and praise the Lord that he still spoke through me. Just letting you know, I know that some of us, we rely on the work, we rely on the technology. We have a smartphone and iPads, but I realized that nothing is permanent. So having the word of God in here as much as possible, I think is the only safeguard. But the reason why I share with your story, have you ever wished the same that you can press a button there so that it will take you to go back to the beginning or you can start a new life? According to statistics, I think over 80% of the people daydream on a regular basis. While whether you're at work or, or you're in class studying, I think we all daydream something better because we all want something better and something perfect. Seems like we all have a little lot of regrets. So how, had, how's, how has it been for you for 2020? You know, we have a wonderful thing called the COVID-19 pandemic started in the beginning of 2020. Along the way, I think it has changed so many of our lifestyle and the ways of things Maybe some of us are thinking that, you know, I wish I can go back and live my life again. So I want us to uh, focus on the word of God this morning. When you go through the Bible, the Bible is a full of stories of individuals. Is there anybody in the Bible who was perfect? Can you think of anyone who was perfect in the Bible? So the only, the, the only their righteous deeds are recorded. I mean, when you go through a lot of genealogy, especially when you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and that's called a faith chapter, there's a lot of individuals. But as you can see, most of them are faulty heroes too. The most of God's people are full of faults. They have many mistakes. I thank God because their faults are written in the word of God too. They're not necessarily for our inspiration, but their, their deeds are written for our hope. I am thankful that, you know, you and I can learn a lot of things from the word of God. By the way, you know, at the same time, there are some individuals in the Bible, only their good deeds are recorded. I mean, Jesus is one of them, correct? Also, when you study, when you, when you read about the life of Enoch, there's no fault that we see, at least based on the records there too. And same thing with Daniel and, and Job. And I will say maybe Joseph is on the borderline too. And I, 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 want, us, I want us to um, talk about the life of Job this morning a little bit. So when you have our Bibles with you, Please join me as we read from the Word of God. And we'll be focusing on Job a little bit. Job chapter 1. And Job chapter 1, verse 1. You can read from your Bible. You can read from your screen or whichever that you have. So Job chapter 1, verse 1, it says, There was a man in the land of Oz, Oz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, 
and one who feared God and shunned evil. It sounds like a very nice man, eh? What do we know about him so far? He was blameless and he was upright. One thing he did was he feared God and he shunned all the evil activities. Not only he said about himself, when you skip to verse eight, and now this is when Jesus is speaking to Satan. Chapter one, verse eight. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth. He's a blameless, upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. We can say, well, I'm a Christian to your neighbors, your friends. But sometimes that does not validate that you're a Christian until others come and tell you, oh, you must be a Christian. But how would you like to hear God speaking something about something like this about you? By the way, have you considered my, my friend Ivan or my friend Wilma? And they are blameless, they are upright, and they shun evil, and they fear God. Would that be wonderful? God saying something like that about you? But as you know, the story goes on, and it seems like he's losing everything there, right? And one by one, he's losing all of his positions there too, at the same time, later on, and he loses his own children Basically everything literally, but this is what Job says in verse 21. He says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't you think that's amazing testimony? I know that you know, in our prayer meetings, when we ask for testimonies, we share what the Lord has done for us this week or maybe yesterday. But even after all those terrible things, even after all the pandemic in his life, he says, well, the Lord he has given me, but he has a right to take you away. He says, blessed be the name of the Lord. But then it's not the end. And it's not the end. When you, when you skip to chapter 2, verse 9, his children might have taken away, but there's another family member was left to him was his wife. By the way, how many of you are blessed to have a spouse? I am too. I am grateful to have my life partner, and we are grateful, grateful to have one, one another. But can you imagine your spouse comes to you after all that they went through together, I mean, think about him. They had a lot of children together. And then his wife comes and said to him in verse 9, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Just curse God and die. I'm sure that that's when he went into very, uh, you know, uh, went into a deep depression mode, it seems like. But even after when his wife said to him, he did not, the Bible says, Job did not sin with his lips. With his words, he didn't sin against God. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have that type of record as we reflect upon our 2020? I know that we speak so many words every single day. I forget, I forget, I think about men, they speak between 20 to 30,000 words. I know that the women are a little bit more than the men when they speak. I, I, know for, I know for a fact that I make many mistakes with my words. My words sometimes hurt people. My words oftentimes discourage somebody else. But wouldn't that be nice? And we were like Job, looking back, my lips, I still honored God. And Job chapter 9, 20 says, though I were righteous, my own mouth, but he says, my own mouth would condemn me. 
Though I were blameless, he would prove me perverse. So when we think about we are perfect and blameless, it seems like we are condemning and deceiving ourselves. You know, I was talking to my friend and he and I, we go a long way back. And both of us, we, we have been married for about 15, 16 years now. And we were talking about good, good, good old days when we were single. And he and I come, came to the conclusion saying that, hey, at one point in our singlehood, we thought we are pretty decent people. You know, we are good Christian men, we are trying to live rightly until we were, we thought we were pretty good until we met our life partner, our wife. I thank God for, you know, spouse, spouses that we have. When you're alone in no man's land, you are pretty decent until someone comes along to, re to reflect your character. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, our heart is deceitful above all things. So realize that there's nothing that we can trust, nothing that we can rely on. The closer to the light, I realize every morning we wake up. I'm not sure about what you do. I usually run to the bathroom, just wash up my face. And I, I make sure before I go in there, I turn on the light. The closer I go to the mirror, the closer I go to the light, the more details are shown in the mirror. And I realize the closer that we come to God, we will, we will realize we are not like him at all. There's so many faulty spots, so many holes that we will see to realize that they need work. But I thank God and I praise the Lord that there is a hope for us and hope for you and for me too. And today is what? December 26. We've got only a few more days left. And in fact, today is the last Sabbath that we have in 2020. And one week from today, we'll be embracing brand new year 2021. And the first Sabbath will be there next week. And I'm not sure about what you do, but every year I seem to do something. Usually around this time or a little earlier, I usually run to my favorite stores called the dollar store. And I pick up something called something like this. Can you see it? It's my monthly planner. And I don't trust my memory. I don't trust my phone. So I still go my old fashioned way. I just buy one of these. I start writing down my plans. But more than my plans, what, what I try to do, I try to, you know, make my New Year's resolution. Have you made, made your, your New Year's resolution yet, anybody? No? <laughs> Maybe some of us are so discouraged because I it failed me so many times miserably. Sometimes I make little things, you know. By the way, one of the one of them always like number one, the top three New Year's resolution of all times is lose 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 weight and exercise. And I think many of us have experienced failure doing so. You know, we make news resolution. We make a list of things that we think that we need improvement. It's something we gotta fix or change in order to force become a better person or a better, better spouse, a better dad or better mom. And then I realize as we do so, I realize I am the center of the activities. It's all about me, me, me. I know that we still wanna be a better person and I realized all the New Year's resolution becomes, I become the center of all the activities. So this morning for the next few minutes, I wanna to suggest to you the biblical New Year's resolution found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse five. Brother Donovan read it to, read it to us, 
2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. I want to read to you one more time. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you are, my Bible says, disqualified. I'm suggesting to you, and let 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 becomes our New Year's resolution. Yes, we want to be a better person by doing this and that. But I think mostly, I think for Christians, and this is what we want to do. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Do I have Christ in my life? Is Christ reflected with my words, my action, even in my attitude? And, in, and the Bible says, when we do not have Jesus Christ, and the Bible says, you are disqualified. By the way, this word disqualified, the original words is coming from the property of metals of coins. So whatever that, whatever the, you know, back in the days when they were making those, you know, metal coins, okay, the people who were inspecting those metal coins, they will go through them very carefully, even with a little small mistakes, they said, well, it's not good enough, it's disqualified, so they send it back. And that's what I saw about 10 years ago, and I had a chance to bring my family over to Ottawa. It's a beautiful city, and that's our capital city. And there's a place I wanted to show my kids, and it's called the Royal, Royal Canadian Mint. Has anyone been there before? Visited? Yeah, it's a fantastic. It actually shows you how the coins are made, how, the, how, how our money is made. So we had a nice tour. They were showing us and how the machines work. There's one particular spot I was really shocked and was going through. I mean, that's basically what I was, what I was explaining earlier. There's one section toward the end of the process, and there, there are a group of individuals go through every single coin that are made. And many coins are rejects. Actually, they, they, they were call it, they were call it, considered as a disqualified. He has a shape, he has a logo, he has a writings, he has uh, the faces on it, but even a slight mistake, even a little scratch, coin is a reject. Basically what they do is they separate them and they, they take them back to the recycling place. So actually they melt them again and go through the process all over again until they become So Bible is suggesting us that we got to start with Jesus Christ in you before we make other plans. Maybe some of us already made, made a plans. I want to lose maybe 20 more pounds. Maybe I want to speak less so I will make, you know, less mistakes. I want to help out more. I want to call people more. But even before you do any make other, making any other plans, let us start with Jesus Christ. Do I have Jesus Christ in my heart? And good, good example is found in book of John, gospel of John. In John chapter 3, whose story do we find? By the way, John 3, 16, that's concentration of the gospel we all know, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. By the way, that, that saying came from Jesus having a conversation with who? Nicodemus in nighttime. He was a little shy. Maybe he did, didn't want to be seen, so he came at nighttime. So he's a good example here too. Was, was Nicodemus a good, faithful Jew? Yes or no? I, I believe he was. He was a really good man. He was faithfully attending church. But according to what God says, he was not good enough. He was a Pharisee, 
That means he was in a leadership position. He was like an elder in the church. But according to the Bible, he was not good enough. And verse 3 says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Basically, new start means to be born again. I know that we, I know that many Christians use that term, same term. They twist the meaning of it. It's I'm a born again Christian. My Bible talks about what real born again, born again Christian means. Even Bible says new intention is not good enough. New resolution is not good enough. Even having strong willpower, I know that brother brother Will has 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 done a fantastic presentation on the, our willpower. But even having the good willpower is not good enough. Making new schedule and change things around is not good enough. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt frustrated in your Christian walk? I have. I was born into Adventism. I grew up in a very um, traditional, in a way, in you know, conservative home. I appreciate it. But at times along the way, I felt frustrated. Let me tell you why. Because we try to live like Christians before God makes us Christians. Are you with me? Let me repeat one more time. We are frustrated because we try to live like Christians before God makes us Christians. When you look at the sanctuary model, I believe there's an answer to everything there. When you look at the sanctuary model, there's a sanctuary there too. There's only one door on the east side. When sinners walk in there, right? In the courtyard, where there's where the justification starts. But sometimes, even before experiencing justification, I think some of us, we want to step into the, the most holy place. We want to experience a sanctification. And no wonder why we get frustrated. That's what Nicodemus was trying to do. He wanted to do all everything right, but not understanding what it means to be born again. So basically Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, even though you are a good person, my friend, you need a miracle. I believe the miracle is Jesus Christ today. I know that yesterday was a big day for the whole world. Christmas. I understand for Adventist Christians, we celebrate Christmas a little differently. We just celebrate the fact that Jesus came to this world. In fact, he came and died for me. But for many others, they celebrate in many different ways. And But let me tell you, the miracle is Jesus Christ today. I came across a song not too long ago. Maybe some of you may know it, maybe not know it. The song is called Less of Me by Glenn Campbell. Maybe some of you do, some of you don't. I thought the lyrics, is, lyrics are so powerful. This is what it says. Let me be a little kinder. Let me be a little blinder to the faults of those about me. Let me praise a little more. Let me be when I am weary just a little bit more cheery. Think a little more, think a little more of others and a little less of me. Let me be a little braver when temptation bids me waver. Let me strive a little harder to be all that I should be. Let me be a little meeker with a brother that is weaker. Let me think more of my neighbor and a little less of me. Wasn't that powerful? And I understand that's what we desire this morning. As we try to close a chapter of 2021, as we are about to open a new chapter called 2021, and we want to experience something new, 
We want to have a new beginning. We want something start fresh. Would you like this to be your experience? I think we want the newness. We want God to come in and give us a new heart, uh, the new motives, and new purpose, and new plans. But how do we do it? I want us to take something back with us. So how do we do it? How can we choose to be humble and be humble? You know, I, I'm not sure about you, but I have tried it multiple times. It failed me miserably because I know who I am. Actually, I don't even know who I am at, at times. And we cannot make ourselves unselfish. So how do we become a better person? And as I came across, you know, usually when we read the Bible, I know that oftentimes one of the, one of the goals for many good Christians is to read the Bible at least one, once a year, right? And oftentimes we start from the beginning of the book called the Genesis, chapter one and verse one, right? And we do fairly well up until like maybe Exodus 26, seven ish, all the laws and regulations are there. And when we get to Leviticus, oh mercy, you know, we'll move further. But I found the answer in chapter one of Genesis and verse one. What does chapter one, verse one says? In the beginning, what? God created heavens and the earth. So what, what does a verse have to do with becoming a better person? And I thought about it. And Bible reminds us, chapter 1, verse 1, Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. Why did God start with a saying? I understand that God, want us, God wants to tell us something that, you know what? He wants to tell us that he is the creator God. He says, everything else before everything begins, I was there and I am the one who created. And when you skip to verse three, and we, see, start, we start seeing the creation account. For first six days, and how did God create? His famous saying said, let there be what? Light, and light was there. He used a word, let there be, when he spoke, when he spoke to power and he became the creative power, it came into existence. You know, when, you, when, we, when, we, when we come home, when it's dark in the evening, we turn it on. And when, we, when, the, when the switch is on and light is on. And I, doesn't matter how many times we say, you know, light on, it's not gonna happen. When we say it is just reality, but when God says it becomes a creative power and Psalm 33 reminds us by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses that all the earth fear the Lord. And sometimes uh, a while back, and I used to play with my son a little bit more with his toys. And his favorite toys are called the Lego. And anyone grew up with Lego, playing with the Lego? And some of you are still playing, maybe, I don't know. And there's one thing about Lego, and the Lego now these days, they come very fancy. Extra pieces there. But one thing about Lego now these days, it comes with instruction book. So it tells you step by step what to do in order to make a certain product. But back in the days when I was playing with the Lego, when I had my Legos, we didn't have any instruction books. It was just set of blocks and it was up to our imagination to create. So I used to boast about, well, I used to show off to my dad and mom saying, hey, dad, look what I've created. I'll make a little, you know, a little dog or a giraffe or a car or a truck, whatever it might be. I said, 
though that I created this, but think of it now, I realized I wasn't the creator. I was simply putting, putting together with what God created for us. One thing I realized that we cannot create. We can only procreate, that's one aspect of it, but God can create. We build something, we manipulate something, we, we may be fabricated with something which already God is created by God. But this morning I wanna share with you, only God can create and recreate us with his omnipotent power. When we make something, we make something out of something already there. But when God does it, he makes something out of nothing in the beginning. That's what he did. Even today, he says, we cannot create a new heart by ourselves. But book of Ezekiel 36, 25 says, he talks about, he gives us a promise of a new heart. And I came across this powerful quote. Well, let me read from Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of a flesh. And I'm reading from the book, God's Amazing Grace. It's Ellen White devotional book, one of the devotional books. And she says here, when Jesus speaks of a new heart, when God speaks of a new heart, he means the mind, the life, the whole being. To have a change of heart is to withdraw the affections from the world and fasten them upon Christ. To have a new heart is to have a new mind, new purposes, new motives, new motives. So what is a sign of a new heart? How do we know that we have a new heart? And she says, a changed life. There is a daily, hourly dying to selfishness and pride that is our sign of a new heart. Well, you know, we can fake it all we want. I can pretend to be a good pastor or a good dad or a good Christian. But between you and the Lord, you know the truth. And sometimes we, 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 we go through the stretch of Christ. Sometimes we get one step wrong. The step is called the repentance. Sometimes we, we, we think that repentance is to just tell God what we have done wrong and walk the other way. I mean, that, that's what Ellen White talks about in Steps of Christ. That is very true, but there's one crucial step sometimes we skip it. Repentance is more than just change of your ways of going and you walk the other way. It's more than the behavior. Literally speaking, repentance mean, means change of your attitude and change of your mind. I can show I can tr try to be a good Christian by doing this or that or reading this, but my heart change only come from the Lord. So this morning, this morning, my proposal to you, if you haven't worked on your New, Re New Year's resolution yet, let it be found in 2 Corinthians 13.5 that we have Jesus Christ in us so that we will be qualified for the kingdom of God. We'll be qualified to be sons and daughters of God. We'll be qualified that he will call us by, you know, by, by his right name. We are, we are friends of God. So I pray and hope that as we wrap up for the next few days, as we reflect upon our life, Let's spend some meaningful time. Maybe some of us can join tomorrow, tomorrow morning service as we do prayer and fasting. But let's ask.
to come into our heart and seek, search our hearts so that there will be nothing between us and our Savior, so that we and God are one. So I pray and hope that we have Jesus Christ once again, so that we become qualified and real and genuine Christian. Amen. Amen.